All right, guys, this is a rematch from the bubble. The Heat and the Bucks. these are two of the hottest teams coming into the playoffs. Game one, we'll pick it up in the fourth quarter. Scary moment for the Bucks. Bam at a bio setting a screen on Giannis Antetokounmpo here, and Giannis going, he's hurt. Hurts his left arm running into Adebayo. He would be treated on the sideline. They put a shooting sleeve on. He would remain in the game. 425 to play. Game tied at 90. Chris Middleton had himself a game. Pull up three bucks up by three. 130 to play. Heat down four. Trevor Ariza brought in for situations like this. Hits the corner three. Heat down one. On the other end, Giannis at the line. Missed his first free throw. Is called for the 10-second violation here. His free throw goes in, does not count. Coach Bud can't believe it. Giannis holding the ball for 13 seconds. That's what the ref has him at, 13 seconds. It's clearly a violation, but one, again, you rarely see called in the NBA. It's not going to count. Nine seconds left. Bucks up two. Giannis back at the line. Made his first. Misses second, so he get the rebound. They call the timeout. Giannis missing five free throws in the fourth quarter, including his 10-second violation. That's tied for the most in his playoff career. So not clutch in that situation. Jimmy Butler. Oh, he's clutch. Gets that to go. Just shot 422, but scoring when it counted. And with that bucket, he sends this one into OT. Under four to play in extras. Heat down three, Duncan Robinson. He was feeling it from distance. 24 points on seven threes. The Heat made 15 more threes than the Bucks. That's going to keep you in games. 45 seconds to play, Heat down one. Robinson missing the three. Drew Holiday getting the rebound off in transition. He had 20 points, 11 rebounds. Milwaukee up three. Heat on the other end. Butler's corner three. No good. Goran Dragic. Getting a wide open look. Stick it. Game tied at 107. The Bucks letting play continue. Middleton here holding for the last shot. Pulls up. Oh, he's money. With 0.5 seconds to go. Middleton, a game by 27 points. Coming up with the clutch shot right here. And the Bucks watch party. They see the W. The Heat, though, had one last chance. Butler getting the inbound, but can't get the shot off in time. The Bucks winning 109-107 in game one. Here's your hero. Just trying to get to this spot. Um, try to get the last shot uh, first, but um, just trying to get to my spot, just raise up that confidence and knock it down. Yeah, you know, tie game. I think, you know, just the ability to, to let Chris work the clock, um, play a little bit of, you know, two-man game with he and Brooke, and, um, you know, Chris has got a knack and obviously hits a huge shot. You know, two teams that aren't going to give uh, any ground um, in terms of, you know, the competitive spirit. Um, and it's, it's probably going to come down to, you know, those plays in between. You miss shots. You got days like that. Um, that's okay. The whole thing is you just got to bounce back, figure out ways how you can be better, um, not just on offense, but on defense as well. You heard Coach Bud say that Chris has a knack for big shots, and he's right. Chris Middleton is now three for six on game tying or go ahead shots in the final 10 seconds of the fourth quarter or overtime in his playoff career. He's one of four players to make at least 50% of those shots over the last 25 postseasons, joining Ray Allen, Reggie Miller, and Robert Ory. Pretty good company. All right, Tim's back with us now. You had to like that Middleton hit. Uh, that was like Ricky Pierce mid range stuff from the old days. What did you like about the Bucs, though, when things got crucial at the end? Yeah, it's a different look for them, I think, this year and years past. And a, a couple of things stood out to me. First and foremost, they've got Drew Holiday on the floor at the end of the game. They haven't had that in the past. And this is pretty critical. And he makes plays like this. I mean, take a look where Drew Holiday starts. When this ball goes up in the air, he is going to end up dead under the rim. But watch his instincts. He starts leaking toward the long rebound before it even hits the rim. Basically covers about 25 feet to get it and then has the strength of finishing and build at the other end. Now this also, put Giannis down here in the dunk spot on the baseline. Great place to slash, great place for an offensive rebound. Let Chris Middleton 
run this set because when you have five defenders like the Heat have here ready to protect the paint, you need somebody that can get a shot from the mid-range area to floor. That's not Giannis. That's Chris Middleton. He goes to his fadeaway, knocks it down, and then one more time to Holiday. They didn't have this the last two years. Guarding Miami's best player on this out of bounds, forces him all the way to the deep corner, and then gets the block. Butler had a hard time gathering right there, but he goes up and makes the block. This is one of the best perimeter defensive players in the league. He comes up with a long, loose ball rebound and a block shot at the end. And then more importantly for me, how are the Bucs going to handle one possession games late? Because most of these series are going to have several of these games in them that will decide the series. In the past, it's been a lot of Giannis isolating from the top of the key. That's not a winning formula because he doesn't have the ability to answer with a jump shot over the top. Chris Middleton is one of the best mid-range jump shooters in this league, and a lot of times that is the shot that's available in that situation. He got to his spot. He knocked it down. Bucks go up 1-0 because if they lost this game, important, you know that that pressure is going to start to hit them based on what's happened to them the last two years. Very important. They got out to a 1-0 lead in this series so that that pressure wouldn't swallow them up in game two. Game one goes to the Bucks. This has got seven games written all over it, I think. Tonight. What big performances you got from Tim Hardaway Jr., Dorian Finney-Smith, and Jalen Brunson. Those three guys combined for 54 points and hit huge, timely shots in the fourth quarter. Now, a lot of that action is Luka Doncic drawing two guys 30, 35 feet from the basket. And, and Teron Lue was adamant on trying to take the ball out of his hands. And Luka was very patient to his credit. And he found guys that were ready to shoot, and they did not wilt under the lights and I thought the Clippers did a little bit they missed critical free throws they had bad shots at the wrong time but most importantly they could not get stops when they needed to because of those guys stepping up in a huge pressure situation and now they've changed the dynamic of the series by winning game one Dallas is in the driver's seat right now uh, Luka Doncic always good but the key was as you said at the top he got the the other players to come in and, and do their role as well yeah, it's critical. And, and look, Kristaps Porzingis wasn't very good in this one. He's their other, quote, star. So he struggled on this game. And typically when that happens, you know, you're not exactly sure. Hardaway's been great all year, but you don't know if he's going to step up and give you 20 in this spot. I think the key was the three-point shooting of Dorian Finney-Smith. You know, you're not expecting to get five threes out of Dorian Finney-Smith. Jalen Brunson's been great all year. He came in and played his normal game. But the three-point shooting of Finney-Smith is something, if you're Toronto Lou with the Clippers coaching staff, you just can't account for that. That's not something that you're talking about on the whiteboard in the locker room. There's so many things you're trying to deal with with Luka, and then Hardaway is plan B defensively. When you have role players stepping up like Dorian Finney-Smith, you just can't make up for that. So give them all the credit in the world. And Hardaway had a couple of huge off-the-dribble threes in this one in the fourth quarter and a beautiful drive to the rim as well. You could see... The wind go out of the sails of the Clippers. They, their heads hung. They got demoralized. Uh, when they fell down five or six with plenty of time to go, they did not look like a team, to me, that believed they were going to come back and win this game by getting a couple stops and a couple key possessions. So give Dallas all the credit in the world. They came out, played with more poise, and threw a gut punch to the Clippers. And now the Dallas, just like that, has home court in this series. Tim, you feel great. Uh, that was a redundant question on my part to stall for time because we have Luka on the floor right after the game. The Mavericks defeated the Clippers in game one here in Los Angeles, 113 to 103, and we're joined by the star of the game, Luka Doncic. Luka, the last time the Mavs won a game one in the playoffs was May 17, 2011. You were 12 years old. What is it like to get game one in this series? I mean, it means a lot, you know. It's a away game, and we won the first game, uh, but I think that'll mean nothing. Uh, we got three more to go, and it's going to be a battle till, till the end. You played this team last season, obviously. Why will this experience be different for you? I mean, I hope it's going to be different. You know? I hope it's not the same story. Uh, but, you know, uh, especially in the bubble, you know, we were just uh, going there to play. Uh, it was a great experience by me, my first playoff. It was really fun to play. And I forgot how much it's fun to play in the playoffs. You got a triple-double tonight. You weren't one of the MVP finalists. Was that a little extra motivation maybe tonight? Uh, no, I don't really care about MVP. Uh, you know, you have great players in this league. Uh, what's important is championship, and obviously that's our goal this season. 
And of course, Tim Hardaway Jr., your backcourt mate, he's been in the starting lineup, he's been out of the starting lineup. What can you say about his performance tonight? Oh, amazing. You know, he's been, like you said, in and out. You know, it's tough as a player. You don't know when you're going to start, when you're going to be off the bench. Uh, I think he did an amazing job. Uh, he's been doing this this all season, and he's a special key for us. Luca, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Tim, staying around. I have statistical information for you. Off memory, that was Luca's third career playoff dribble double and seven career postseason games. That's the second most.